Right, hello, it's Jimmy here at Riley's. We have a Ford Transit uh, rear wheel drive this one, and he's been having a run around, so they're just going for a walk over there. Um, been having a run around with the DPF again. Um, all sorts of sensors have been changed. He said it's been forced regen two or three times in a row, and the problem comes back within a week. So he wants a permanent fix, he doesn't want to keep going around in circles. So that's where we are. So we've got Johnny over there, he's setting up the diagnostics. We're going to get inside the van, have a look at what's going on. Pretty sure we already know what it's going to be. Um, but you never know, things can change. We'll get inside and have a look. Okay, we have engine service now. It's, it's a little bit dirty, it's hard to see, but the engine light's on. It's in limp mode, he said. And um, it's been the DPF's been cleaned on this. So the DPF's been cleaned, uh, it's been forced regen uh, three or four times. Something about a manifold sensor, he said. Take like a map sensor, but he wasn't really sure what sensor it was. Um, and then he's, another guy has told him he needs a new turbo. Uh, but he said he wasn't really confident that that guy knew what he was talking about. And another guy said he needs a new DPF, and he was quoted over three grand for it. Um, so it, even if it needs a new DPF, it would be a lot cheaper than that for me to do it. Um, so right, we'll. Um, Get the diagnostic hair set up and see what's going on. I'm going to use the launch CRP MOT4 on the health report. I do mostly love working on transits. They're generally easy to work on. The EPFs are easy to remove. Most of the repairs are easy, easy to do, um, even roadside like I am. And they're generally very easy for me to diagnose. I mean, I think of very rarely, maybe in the last 50 D Ford Transits I've seen with a DPF issue, it hasn't where, I've probably seen one where it hasn't been the vaporizer. Um, this vehicle has done 248,000 miles, so we could have a problem with ash build up, that could be the case. Maybe the vaporizer is working, and maybe it's just got an ash build up and it's not cleaning with an on car clean. And that would be a good scenario for the machine that I've just got, if that is the case. 240,000 four transits are generally still good, the DPF is generally still good at that mileage on these. Um, but around about that mark is where you sort of see ash build up generally. Okay, we're getting fault codes up, just giving on a few taps here. Just waiting for it to load now. It's acting a bit slow. So we've got glow plugs which we're not going to worry about on these. I have confirmed in the past that the glow plugs don't affect the DPF. So we've got P2463, P24A4, particle filter restriction, particle filter restriction again, P2463, glow plug 123, just that. Now, I don't know if you can see here, but he's borrowed this from his mechanic friend, Snap-on, and he did send me a screenshot of a fault code that said particle filter temperature too low. And what that says to me is that it needs a new vaporizer. But we're going to get underneath now and we'll test that. Uh, live data. Get a few items up here. So these are the items that you want to be looking at. Your, your percentages of DPF, this is just calculated stuff. But here's your live pressure, 43 millibars, and temperature of the DPF. So this is where the vaporizer would be given the issue. This needs to reach only during a region. Normal drives it would be sort of between 150 to 250 degrees. And when it needs to region, this should reach 620 degrees, roughly around there. But if the vaporizer isn't working, you'd mainly see temperatures around 3 or 400, and it just can't reach the 600 degrees. Okay, we're taking the front driver's wheel off. We're going to gain access into where the vaporizer is here. We're going to let him do the hard work. So over here we have the vaporizer. We're just going to connect up to the fuel line here. And then we'll test it with a gauge. What happened there? Is it tight? That's it. Okay, 
Okay, so that's the vaporizer out, and we get a new one in. And just having a look under the van here, we can see that the DPF itself has never been off, and it doesn't look like it's ever been replaced. It all looks original. So, we might have a damaged DPF or ash build up, we're not sure. You don't normally ever see a damaged DPF again on the four transits. Um, ash build up is possible, of course, at 250,000 miles, but in a case of damaged DPFs, it's very, very rare. Um, we did have one recently that was damaged, but that was um, on an it was an aftermarket DPF that was fitted to a transit, and it just it wasn't reaching temperature. Uh, but the original DPFs themselves on these Mark, f uh, Mark this is a Mark Eight, but it's a Euro Five, so the Euro Five versions don't usually give a lot of. Um, a lot of grief in regards to crack DPFs and stuff like that. So we've got the DPF fluid now going in to clean the DPF. So we've got a few minutes to go in. That's the fluid we're using there. Okay, we've got the cleaning fluid in. I can see another slight issue here is that we're reading 5.9 with the engine off. I don't know if that's just because the ignition's been off and let me just see if I can zero in the sensor. On this MOT4 we can't go to the special functions while we're in the system. We need to fully go out and then go into the service function here. Uh, we need to go to find a DPF. It's a little bit different than your standard launch ones this one. Gas particle filter, where's the diesel one? There it is. Okay, now we're in the special functions, we're going to try and calibrate the sensor. We're also going to reset the DPF values while we're here, save us coming back again. Okay, now we're going to start the vehicle up. Try and get it where there's no glare, sun glare, there we go. Right, we'll hold the revs up, around about 3000 RPM. So while we're doing that, we've just cleared the fall codes. We'll go back in and keep an eye on the live data now. Okay, we're on 260. It's a lot of glare, but we're on 240 so far. That's better. Got a little bit of a shield here. We want that to come down to less than sort of 60 millibars, really. Less than 80 would be good, but a good new DPF would come down around sort of 40, 50 millibars. Okay, we seem to sort of evened out around here so far. Strange that, well it's not strange, I mean it's um, it's funny how, I think I mentioned at the start of this video that this might have ash build up and we might have to remove the DPF. It's kind of looking that way and I find it sort of still, I still sort of impress myself is probably the word I'd like to say is that before I even looked at the van before I even took it apart I kind of knew the procedures that I was going to have to do I knew the vaporizer would need replacing and I kind of had a feeling that we might have to maybe take the DPF off and flush it or we might have a damaged DPF um, and it looks like we're going that way because we're not going any less than 140 millibars we're gonna take it for a drive and see if that helps idle we have 17 millibars 16 Okay, engine off, we have zero, so the sensor is reading correctly now by calibrating that in. Right, he's gonna take that out for a test drive. We're gonna do at least sort of 10 miles and that, 15 miles. Okay, test drive back, we have 17 pressure. So it hasn't really come down as low as we'd like it to. We needed it to come down to six millibars. Hold it at 3000 RPM. Ok, 
Okay, we have the EPF off. It's bad news. There's damage on it. It's melted. So, but uh, we've got it off. Why not? We'll try and um, we'll try and back flush it on the machine. Okay, so just so we're clear, this DPF is damaged. We're going to need to fit a new one. We can't get one for four days. So while we've got it off here, we're just going to experiment basically and stick it on the on the DPF cleaning machine and see what happens. Um, just see see if the pressure comes down a bit more. But this DPF is finished. It needs a new one. So we've got it hooked up to our carbon clean machine here. Just I want to do some experiments with this machine and see what it's capable of doing basically. So there's no point cleaning this. There's no point doing a proper clean on it because it's, it is going to be a waste but we're just doing it just out of curiosity we've already got it off and uh, I'm just going to run a flush through to see what happens all right let's get it going should kick in any second I think it takes like 30 seconds I've got it on the timer 20 seconds should give a blast. There's a lot of black crap coming out still. Okay, we're going to do one more blast, do this one manually. Looks a fair bit cleaner now. Okay, now the DPS removed off. That's the fluid that comes with this machine here. We've put that through it with a mixture of water and obviously just kicked it straight through. It's hard to really see how clean that's that's what that's done really. Okay, idle we have about two millibars of pressure. Hold it up to three thousand RPM. We have about sixty. Okay, that's all done. Um, it is a damaged ZPF, like I said, but we have the correct pressures, and he's going to take it on a test drive now. Now that may last some time but it'll give the customer a chance at least to um, bear the bill of having to replace the DPF it does need replacing at some time but at least you know by putting it on the machine it has helped the pressure um, I would prefer to have had a better scenario here uh, a DPF that wasn't actually had had any damage on it but it is what it is and we've got to live or work with what, we, what we've got for the time being you might see this van back in the future um, we'll see how long it lasts this could last a couple of years, we don't know. We'll see how it goes.